This video is all about showing you how to use the multi-board label generator. So let's head straight on over to the listing and get going. So this is going to be a Blender file. You don't need to know about Blender or anything. All you have to do is make sure that you install Blender. So go to blender.org and get it installed there. Then click here on download and that's going to give you a Blender file. When you actually open up that file, it's going to look like this. It has a whole bunch of things loaded up on it, so it will take a moment to load up. But once it's loaded up, it's going to be here and ready to go. Now, from here, it's actually incredibly simple if you want. All you have to go is right here where it says the label text, put in whatever it is, like, I like ice cream and you're now going to learn that I do suck at spelling. So there we go. I like ice cream. It's changed it up. If I wanted this to be ready to go and print, I have to click prep to print. We have to wait a couple of seconds here and then there it's ready. So you'd select this, then you would go file, export, STL, decide exactly where it is you want to save it. Make sure you select it to selection only and then click export STL. So that's how to create a really simple label. How about adding an icon to it? So I'm going to turn off this, go back to prep to print. And let's say I want to create a very short label. Okay. And let's say this time I only want it to be M3 by 35. So M3 by 35, that's a little bit too big. I'm going to make my text a little bit smaller. Then I can move it on the X and Y here. So I'm going to move this over this way, I want to be a bolt on the right hand side of that. So on my custom icons number one, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to take a look, see where there's one. Here it is, bolt. There's the bolt. So I'm going to move that bolt icon. Now, let's see, which way am I going? I'm going to go this way over here. If you wanted, you could also go and give this icon a little rotation as well. And we'll say something like that. Bolt icon there, ready to go. So once again, this is ready to go. I'm going to click prep to print. It's now joined it all up. And once again, we're going to go to file, export, STL, make sure it's selected and decide where it is you want to save it. Hit selection only and export that label. Okay, now lastly, how about doing your own custom icons? So first, we already know that we have this one icon and we have this text. I'm going to go back to a long label here. So I've turned off prep to print now, and I'm just going to add another one on this side here. Now it's currently set to a custom type. So I don't have to change anything, but here you can see I need to select a custom label. Now I've got to import an SVG to make this label. So I'm going to go file import. And then here you're going to see there is scalable vector graphic. That is the one we want, not SVG as grease pencil. This one here. So go and find an SVG you like. Here is one that I've had ready earlier. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click import. Now it might be absolutely teeny tiny when you first get it. You'll see this appeared just underneath my head. And in fact, let me just move my head for a moment. There you go. And I'm going to go and click on it. Then I'm going to press one on my numpad or you can press tilde and go to view selected. And it's going to be, you see, it's absolutely tiny. It's right down there. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm just going to zoom out. I'm going to just for the sake of making it easier to see what's happening here, I'm going to press N to open up the side menu, click item making sure that it's selected. And now I'm going to go here and scale this up by 100. So we can see that it's a little bit there. Maybe I'll scale it up by 1000 so that we really get to see it. Now I need to move this. I'm going to click the move tool and I'm just going to move it down so that we can have it off here to the side. Okay. Now it gets a little bit more involved here, but we can go through this. With that selected, I'm going to click the data type. And I'm going to say, hey, the fill type, I want this to be none. Now, some of you might have brought in some other type of SVG that has a whole bunch of curves inside of it. So I'm just going to replicate what you might have right this minute. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go part. Hold on, just need to make sure that I have this here. All of that part. And you'll see that now I have two curves right here, you might have a whole bunch of curves. All you have to do is select them all and press control J to join them into one object. 
Now that that is selected and joined into one object, we're going to click this label once again, click this little modifier wrench here, and now I'm going to select the custom icon. I'm going to select it. I'm going to select that custom icon here, and you'll see that that's popped up there. Now be careful. Depending where you've brought this icon in, it might be incredibly huge. It might be incredibly tiny. So you might need to bring this scale all the way back down or all the way up. It's very much dependent on the scale of your icon. Now, the icons that I've brought in here, I've specifically downloaded them from a lovely website, which is this one right here. They have a whole bunch of open source icons. All of the icons come that really teeny tiny size. So because they come at that teeny tiny size, you'll see that a times 14 brings it up to this size here. And that's basically it in a nutshell. So we can go here, we can move this to wherever it is we want. Let's say I wanted this to be moved all the way over here, nice and close and you guessed it. All we have to do is follow the instructions. Be sure to tick prep to print. We'll tick that on now. And I'm going to say, OK, I am happy with this. Let's go and export it. So file. Then I'm going to go export, click STL, find where it is that I want to save it. I'm going to say selection only. I want to export this. So how about slicing this? How am I exactly am I going to go about doing that? Well, let's go into a slicer. Here I am inside of Bamboo Lab. You can do this inside of any slicer. You do not need a multi-material printer for this. So I'm just going to go. Here I have it, my little label that I've created. I'm going to plop that down on here. And now I'm going to say, OK, the back is going to be white. I'm fine with that. I'm going to give it a little slice first time round. Remember that I have this set to 0.2 layer heights. I'm just going to drag this down one layer. I'm going to go right click change filament. I'm going to change it to a blue and then I'll move that back up. Tell it to slice once again. And there we have it all set and ready to go. You can see that I do have a couple of very strange things going on here. Maybe the best results I find that we get is if we change the wall generation type to Arachne and then we'll give that another little slice. There we go. Much better wall generations that we're wanting here. This might be a little bit too thin. Might need to make go and change the font, make it a little bit bigger. But all of that is possible in here. All we have to do is turn off prep to print, change the font. Let's say we go for pop-ins. Let's say we make the text size quite a bit bigger this time. We'll move it just this way, a little bit that way. We'll move the bolt as well. Let's say over here, over there. Let's make the bolt a little bit bigger as well. And we'll move that over here, drop it down a touch. Let's say, let's say I want it actually this way. Yeah. And then we'll just decide where we want all this to go. And then we've got that little horse icon. Let's go this way, that way, make the icon scale a little bit bigger. And you guessed what I'm going to do already. I'm just going to go click prep to print. Then I'm going to click file, export, STL, making sure it's selected. Click selection only. I'm going to version this one so it's number two. Go this way. Let's take this over into Bamboo Slicer once again. So I've got it here, ready to go. Number two, we'll drag and drop that in. Now this time around, it should, now when I slice this, already have this set up to do a color change. And the color change is now going to give us a much better label. This is much better, by the way, having two perimeters for the text. That's exactly what we're looking for. But you can get away with just one. Um, so that there is the multi-board label generator, how to create your own custom icons and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you need any other support, make sure to hit me up over in the multi-board community. Thank you for watching and keep making.